Welcome back to another Thousand Bits of Hope episode. So far this season, we've had some really amazing guests, including the CEO of Girl Scouts of the USA, Sylvia Acevedo, and CTO of the startup Edlift, Arnell Ansong. Well, today is no different. We have an international trailblazer who has forged a path for many women in her community and around the world. Today's speaker is Roya Maboub, the first female CEO of a tech company in Afghanistan. Although she grew up in a society where women usually did not work outside of their house or may have not been allowed to go to school, she fought for her passions and dreams. She earned a bachelor's degree in computer science and communication systems at Hirat University, became the president for the Afghan Citadel software company, and now is the CEO and co-founder of Digital Citizen Fund. This company is a nonprofit which helps girls and women in developing countries gain access to technology and virtually connect with other women around the world. As the first female CTO of a tech company in Afghanistan, Roya has inspired many girls in her community to follow her footsteps. She even mentored an all-girls robotics team which has been building ventilators during the coronavirus pandemic. She has even been recognized as Time's 100 Most Influential People in the World in 2013. So thank you so much for joining us today, Roya. I'm so excited to interview you today. Sure, thank you. I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about your childhood and what got you to where you are today, since predominantly our audience is young girls and women. So how did you decide that you wanted to major in the STEM field? Was there a defining moment in your childhood or a mentor or a role model who inspired you? Mm, the society was a uh, bit still had the, the Taliban culture still was, uh, was very strong at the time. And we only had one library in Herat that uh, had the uh, old books. And uh, if we wanted to search anything, we had to, uh, or find any books, we have to uh, give the name of the book and send someone to Iran and waiting months or weeks that someone come back and uh, brought those books that we were looking for. And um, so the life was kind of, I feel that we are living in darkness because there was only one reality uh, that only your your father would tell you, or the ta uh, the, the mullahs or the teachers. So there was not so many um, things to do. I felt, and and that was um, when I heard that there is an handicap in Herat that was open up, and uh, and there is people call it that this is a magic box uh, uh, that you can go there and you can find any information you want and. And you can talk with the people. And it was me. I was very curious. So I was so excited to go there. And uh, but it, at that time, it wasn't good for a girl to go walking in the cafe. And it's only appropriated for the boys, for my cousins, my brothers to go. But my curiosity uh, gave me courage to go uh, to the center cafe in Harad, where where I saw the computer for the first time. I saw this box that connect people um, with a big and outside world. Uh, that was, and I feel it that this, uh, when I saw the computer and working with the internet, that I was realized that uh, this uh, small box can be answer to my problem, the realization of my dreams. And, and at, at that time I was looking at the computer, I was a student and look at the computer and I couldn't see, but I could imagine the future that was in my grasp. The dream that I could be realized, hope to be blessed, blessed and hope blessed met with me, me. And it was the time that I made it uh, determined to make somehow technology be the center of my career. Wow, that's such an amazing moment. And it's so cool to see how that inspired you to end up pursuing computer science. So well, what did your family think about you pursuing this career and were they supportive? In most Middle, Middle Eastern countries and especially in Afghanistan, uh, many of the families, uh, your parents want to become as an engineer or as a doctor. And when I was, uh, I mean, I was, uh, when I was um, um, approved for the computer science faculty or was selected to computer science, uh, my family was kind of like the, how you ended up in computer science because computer science was so new at the time and you didn't know what 
what would be the future of someone's go to learn about software engineering. Wow, that must have been really hard just because the future was so uncertain. What advice would you give to other girls to stay confident whenever they're facing obstacles like this one? I would say to everyone is to follow their dreams and what they want to be in. And if they really love some things, they can, um, any field, I, I guess that there was, has a challenging and a lot of a struggle, any field that we can go now, of course, that uh, technology and IT industry or engineering is a bit uh, more uh, challenging for women because there are uh, more male dominated industries and um, there are less women role models uh, and then it's make um, it's make a kind of like environment to be a uh, difficult uh, for for women uh, to get succeed but uh, but if they love some things if they really um, have passion for their fields I feel that um, they can overcome of these challenges it's easy because you love what you do Absolutely. That totally makes sense. And I think something that's really amazing is how you became one of the first female CEOs of a tech company in Afghanistan. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey to getting there or what inspired you or prompted you to create this company? Yeah, to, uh, as I mentioned before, I first of all, I when, uh, graduated from computer science, started working at Bright University as an IT coordinator. And uh, I was one of very few women uh, to work there and then also it was one of the uh, first uh, IT coordinator in uh, 22 public universities the rest was men and uh, I feel that at that, that the time that okay uh, we needed to have uh, to doing more and that was a reason that uh, uh, we uh, my sister and I and two other of our colleagues uh, we started a campaign called Afghan Street Software um, the campaign grew quickly as uh, we hired a lot of women as programmers and bloggers and um, we extended our business and I becoming one of the first uh, or early first uh, female tech CEOs in Afghanistan. And as one of the first female IT CEOs, did you see that you faced any sort of discrimination or obstacles because you were a female in the industry and that was just such a new thing at the time? I mean, being as a tech female CEO is anywhere in the world uh, will introduce you some obstacles. But in Afghanistan, um, well, many of the women should stay at home, and uh, working in a very male-dominated industry was very difficult and was very challenging, and sometimes was very devastating. But um, but anyway, uh, we uh, overcome of many of those challenges by by technology, by using technology, by becoming a digital entrepreneur, and. Uh, finding many other ways through technology. I, I feel that there was a moment that we, we, we all like uh, wanted to stop, but um, there is always a ways to overcome up these challenges. And I think that technology was a way for me and uh, to not connect it to border of a country that uh, some people can make a decision for you. And we could still work for um, finding the clients outside of the country and working with them and extending our business and we could travel whether to very physically travel and um, that was also amazing and uh, we did meet many of our like meeting at the time online and uh, that was also created a safety for us um, at that time it was uh, when we started was very early and uh, even for many of the men uh, started, started the campaigns um, being as an engineer going to the market and telling them that you want to design their uh, or doing networking for them or doing um, building a system or designing a new system or technology for them was for them for many of the men wasn't like uh, because many of your clients were men at the time and uh, they not uh, trust you or they uh, they you would discriminate it because of your gender or they um, they laugh on you and they are they wanted to give you pay less than the men's uh, in the market and sometimes they even you do did your job for them and they didn't want to pay for you for your work that you have done for them and they put a lot of and some like have to struggle with that industry and then at the same time because you're working um, with a farmer or you're working with uh, some of your clients would be NATO or other, other uh, projects, um, which is created also 
another tension, um, another uh, like difficulties with uh, with uh, with the uh, local Taliban, with the conservative groups, and who don't want the girls urban men work outside of home, and uh, we got a lot of like at the time challenging um, the lots of people who didn't want, especially men, that you could work. And they're trying that in any way to make your works to not get succeed. Yeah, it definitely sounds like there were a lot of different challenges or a lot of different um, obstacles that you had to overcome. But even now, like you've become a role model for so many other amazing women who want to be just like you um, when they grow older. Um, and it's amazing too how much you're giving back to your community. Um, you know, from with the Digital Citizen Fund, you know, creating schools in Afghanistan and Mexico uh, for others to learn more about computer science and engineering, or even to helping the all girls robotics team who is even now building ventilators during the coronavirus pandemic. So um, why did you decide to create these initiatives and why is it important to give back and help other girls who want to pursue this field? Well, I mean, when I started to work, I was curious, but I know that there are millions of the girls who are out there like me, curious, but giving a normal reason to explore the world. And all I wanted is to share the, um, the my sex as a story uh, and the tools that they needed. It's uh, computer and internet connection. Um, I started to show some fun with one goal and one dream. The goal was to see the technology as an accessible option for everyone, especially the women in conservative countries. And uh, and the dream was that even uh, everyone had the same opportunity to education and technologies available to them regardless of their gender and social status. And uh, it might seem a big uh, goal, but I think that uh, if we do not have a courage to lead the way uh, and fight for something different, nothing will be ever changed around the world. And uh, and what if we were willing to stand up for a different future for women and children um, around the world, we will find a way uh, and uh, we will feel the power to do what is necessary to do to affect these changes. And uh, today, the Children's Fund has trained more than 15,000 of the girls uh, in Afghanistan. And uh, we train the young girls at the young age of uh, 12 to 18, mostly in uh, public schools. Uh, uh, that they learn about coding, social media, they learn about the financial literacy, and we have advanced classes that um, uh, like uh, robotics, uh, blockchain, and uh, um, electric, uh, electric and mixing electricity with uh, electric with arts. So there are lots of um, advanced classes for the students who can come. And we have seen a lot of like successful stories. We have more than hundreds of the of them started their own startups uh, and taking their lives into their own hands to helping other girls and women to lead a, a lead of a life of choice and that never before imagined of that and then um uh we had last year a big exhibition of these uh, young women who started their own startups and yeah what was very amazing the age of the 16 17 who started their own startups and have lots of employees and some of them really really making good uh progress and then um we also sort of like um a team of like um uh, i mean uh three years ago um we got part of the um the first global as a uh, global uh, international competition for teenagers um that uh they asked me to put in a team uh, and then i decided to put all team all girls because definitely it's not a mass issue of women in in afghanistan but also in the world so we selected six of them and uh, from 150 uh, who participated in an exam. And, and we all know that they couldn't get the visa and, and the visa was application were rejected twice in Afghanistan and Ghana. I think that where we are the only two countries from 100, more than 67 countries that we, our visa was rejected. But we courageously persisted and uh, and and says that we must not be ignored and our voice will not be lost like thousands of this woman in the past centuries. Again, we use the social media and technology to telling our stories and it was reached by 
the power of the media and, and support of the many of the people around the world and uh, 53 years congressman signed a petition. And then we got the attention of the White House and the very last minute President Trump uh, granted the girls uh, uh, the visa and then they could come and, and they received the uh, um, uh, the Carter's achievement, uh, like uh, the award, and then uh, they come back. But uh, what is very important was that uh, uh, they, they, I mean, they captivated the public with giving this final message of the determination and hope, and then um, they proved that after many years of darkness and subjection, I think girls across of the country can finally take the charge and inspire to be master of their own lives or their own destiny. This was the power of our youth, the courage, their courage against the backdrop of personal and national uh, tragedies and um, that has infection of the hope and the power of the install the hope. Wow, it's just amazing to see how much work you've done to help other girls and other students in underrepresented communities or third world countries. It's truly motivational. And your accomplishments definitely do not go unknown. Um, just to name a few, you've been named Times Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World, um, World Economic Forum Young Global Leaders, and also Michael Dukeas' Leadership Fellow Award. So how does it feel to be recognized for all the contributions that you have made to society? And how do you use your status to provide a platform to spread positive and important messages? Um. Well, I feel, of course, proud, and then um, I'm really, really thankful for all of those recognition. And sometimes I feel that I shouldn't get this recognition. Uh, or, um, but anyway, I mean, um, I think that I feel happy or proud, I can say, um, that the work that we do is, uh, is recognized. And, um, and it seems that we bring the changes in the society. and. Um, I'm very happy and uh, and at the Shelter Funds I believe that we're really trying to make the dreams to become true. We are not only inspiring the world but uh, we are really equipping uh, conservative women with a skill of education uh, and we believe that we want one woman at a time. This was the, our first journey uh, and we have seen so many successful stories and I think that I have used this all recognition that to just bring in the attention of the world to, on, on the cause that uh, I have changed my life and I think that it's possible for every other woman so we can see those successful stories and uh, women have started your own companies despite your families and overcome come up tremendous out uh, to live your dream they go into many of the stages to compete I mean at the age of 16 probably I was so excited to learn about computer and and just uh, this uh, magic box was for me um, a big dream and it was a big uh, um, say that a big prize at the time for me but look at the, the new generation they are age of 16 now they go to the compete in the world they're building robots they're working to build ventilators um, in this pandemic crisis and they're trying to help their community wow it's just amazing what those young girls are doing and all the progress that they've made um, and if it's okay with you, I'd like to play a really quick game of rapid fire. So I have just three quick questions to learn more about you. So the first question is, what is your favorite cuisine? Cuisine? Um, I think with rice and chicken. <laughs> Yum. Okay, my next question is, if you could talk to anyone, living or dead, who would you talk to and why? It's a difficult question, uh, because I wanted to talk with so many people and for so many reasons. <laughs> I know it's when you just asked the question, I wanted to meet uh, Shelly uh, Sonnenberg again, because I met once with her, and um, I think she's a role model for me, and, um, and uh, I love her books. And, been in and uh, and I feel that she's very strong uh, female leaders in tech industry. Yeah, it would be so amazing to be able to meet Cheryl Sandberg. Um, and my last question is, what was your favorite place to travel to, or which place do you want to travel to? Uh, 
I think that every place that I went there, there had some beauty on in it, and uh, really like with the community and the culture of the people, the foods, and their uh, different way of the culture of hospitality. Uh, you like so like I like uh, Switzerland because it's very beautiful. It's, uh, I like it because I learned how to do ski. Yes, Switzerland's a beautiful country. Well, thank you so much for playing our game. And I'd like to end off this interview with one final question. So my question is, what advice would you give to middle and high school girls who are interested in pursuing a field in computer science? And what advice would you give to those girls who maybe don't know what they want to do yet? Uh, I think that first I would say to those young girls who are unsure what to do, I think that it's good for them that they just try to go to their robotic classes and uh, just uh, try it. And, like, I think that it's an amazing um, field and I wish that I was very young and I could have this opportunity to go and learn about robotics because it's not only that they can go to pursue the fields of the computer science, but it's also give this young woman at very young age that uh, believe on their own abilities and have self-confidence and help them for the better communication and solving the problems, which is great. They can use all those skills for their future. And uh, for those women who go to the computer science, I think that there are lots of the women are right now the role model of the computer science and we really need the diverse minds of the um, uh, people in this uh, in this industry and uh, they needed to come and uh, we have to change uh, um, and I believe that they should not give up uh, their dreams and they're really passionate about computer science um, lots of the challenges are going to be in their in their way but if they love it and they have passion it and they keep continuing they can get succeed well thank you so much um, I think definitely you know, so many girls are going to take your advice to heart really and such an amazing woman i know that any girl who is going to listen to this is going to be really inspired and motivated by your story especially seeing how you're able to accomplish so many roadblocks and boundaries that you faced um so thank you so much for your time today thank you thank you for interviewing me. Take care.